well, we're on the downside of things now, right? From spring break on, it's downhill, so that's good. Okay. Everybody hear me okay in the other locations? No. Can you all hear me yet? Yeah. All right. How about um, South Boston? Can you all hear me? Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay, dokie. All right. So uh, we've got <coughs> to move along in um, our four functions of management that we're dealing with. We're going to do chapters uh, 12 and 13 this week. Uh, the one that we do today, chapter 12, is going to introduce the topic of influencing, which is also known in a lot of uh, management classes as leading. Um, so either term you use is okay there. Uh, leading or influencing, and then the second part of the chapter deals with uh, communicating and some better, some good communication tools that we can use because communication is the uh, a big piece of the uh, influencing part of management. So um, let's take a look at um, our. My board website here and see what we got going on. Right here. <coughs> All right, so again, we've got um, two different chapters chapter 12 and 13 up there, and I've uh, got no additional homework or anything for either of those chapters, so just make sure you're reading your chapters and, and studying what's going on there. So um, I've got no PowerPoints. I may have to share it again. Can you all see PowerPoints? Yes. Okay.
integrity, of course, deals with your honesty and your ethics and so on. Knowledge of yourself. Are you able to set your own short-term and long-term goals? Leadership skills. Uh, understanding the areas of the business and then top management. All right. So look through that list and do you see some skills that you feel like you might be excelling in? Or maybe some that you think that you need some work on? Because this is what our employees or our CEOs are um, actually um, wanting you to have as you come into the... I'm not even on my phone. Well, it was... Just unlock me. My phone stays unlocked. No, it was on my phone. Came over no, there. it wasn't. The screen was dark. Don't you still leave it right here? So I'm not phone or anything like this. Okay, but I have someone calling me for an emergency. That's why I have my well, phone. Well, if it right rings, I'll, I'll get it. Okay, you know, no cell phones in class. That's the way it goes. Okay? You get all upset and everything. I'm not upset. Just keep teaching. Like to take the phone and go outside the classroom. Well, too, but you can't have it while you're in. Okay, so how about uh, how do you think you're doing on your oral and written communication skills? Did you do well in your English class, your college comp class? We've got business 236, it's a required class now that works on both of those. All right, so. These are the things that you would want to highlight if you are interviewing for a job. Um, things that they view as being important. All right, so our managers and our already folks that have made it up into the company um, have also recognized something called emotional intelligence as being important. Yeah, they want you to be smart, but they also need you to be emotionally smart. And what that means is that you are able to recognize not only your own feelings, but everyone else's as well. Kind of motivate yourself, okay? Manage your own emotions, okay? As well as your emotions and relationships with others, okay? You do not want to... Um, you ever see anybody just completely freak out over something? That's not the kind of thing that they want to see happen in a business. Even if you have a uh, professional disagreement about something, it needs to be handled professionally, not uh, unintelligent as far as your emotions go. We use that terminology. So, looking for emotional intelligence. So these emotionally intelligent managers that they want are going to be able to motivate other people, focus on their own development and the organization's development. They need to understand others. They need to communicate efficiently and effectively and lead others. Clearly this is the chapter on leading, so that's the focus there. They need to do some team building, uh, there's a um, <laughs> mistake there on that next slide. I think that's supposed to be handled conflict appropriately. If straighten out your slide there. They didn't do a very good job of editing those. But when there is conflict, you need to be able to handle that appropriately. Manage diversity and change. Those are going to happen to you. Changes, no matter what, are going to... Uh, take place and you need to handle that appropriately. Diversity, creativity, and innovation. So um, those are all skills that our uh, CEOs are looking for in good leaders. Concepts of motivation, communication, leadership, teamwork, creativity, innovation. Again, they're just pulling out the main concepts of those uh, emotionally intelligent uh, ideas there. Alright, so that's just a little bit of background on leading or influencing people in general. 
remember the hexagon kind of, I guess it is, with the communication right in the center of that um, different types of processes going on in the leading function. Uh, that just shows you how very important communication is. Communication is simply sharing information with individuals. Um, one person projecting a message to one or more other people with hopefully the people all arriving at a common understanding of that message. And I found a little video. Um, stop the share. It's really interesting on YouTube. It's kind of a uh, variation of the um, the old game we used to play when I was really young, where you whispered a secret into somebody's ear and then it went on down the line and by the time it got to the end, it was usually something completely different than what you started with. So let's take a look at um, an example of that. Get this up and then I can share it. Okay. All right. So let's... Okay. 
Uh, this one takes it into kind of a, a business setting. So the other one was in the classroom, but let's look at the uh, in the business setting. And let me get him up. Pause him so we can share this slide.
go and, and YouTube that and um, make sure you're okay with it. Because there were several examples there of some bad communication going on. Uh, there was the one where the interview was taking place and someone just came right in and, and interrupted. There was also the example of as that interruption was taking place, we kind of mapped off on that employee, which set, did not set a good example for the person who was considering the job. You can see that she kind of backed away and said, I need to think about that. All right, there was also the communication on the report, and it wasn't obviously what the manager wanted. He folded it up and walked out and said, what is this garbage? That was bad. Then there was the guy who got fired by email. Not an appropriate way to communicate at all. So see some uh, lots of examples there of bad communication going on. So let's talk about how we can actually do a little bit better job of communicating. So let me see if I can um, PowerPoints back going here. Uh, this is the same thing that's over there, but I doubt it's going to go forward. So, all right, so we know what communication is.
source all the way to the destination. We want to use the signal that is, uh, and the encoding and the transmission that is the best to maintain all of that um, as being a valid communication. So here it is in a little flow chart, the source um, of the information, Someone who delivers it is the encoder through some type of signal. Somebody receives it, they have to decode it, um, and then it gets to its destination. So a little, um, few steps more than you actually think sometimes other than just talking and listening, okay? Now, when you have people that have experience of the same type, those experiences overlap, and that can help in the signaling process. It can, you see the overlap that's there on that slide. You can see how when the experience is similar, there's less decoding that has to take place with the um, two individuals. You know, each company has their own language, they talk different talk, and you know, you don't work there, you don't necessarily know what everything means. Well, think about within a company, each department usually has its own lingo, and someone that's outside of the department may not understand exactly what's going on as well. And there are lots of things that create barriers to communicating effectively. Uh, Barriers are something that's going to stop that communication from being uh, helpful. We have macro, which means big picture bar barriers, and micro barriers, little things. Uh, the macro barriers, uh, we're all going to be subject to complex information. Our information is more and more complex out there. We're getting also an increasing number of languages being needed. Okay? Uh, you may have foreign subsidiaries or just customers in other countries and so on. And uh, when you don't have the same language, that makes things very complicated. Um, we don't here in this area aren't subject to a lot of different languages, but I'm finding it more and more needed to be able to be fluent in um, Spanish. It's uh, think about some of the more diverse neighborhoods where there are very, very many different types of uh, languages. We also have decreased the time available for our communication. Um, you know, we get our communication via computers these days, not via, via uh, our little um, post office where we mail letters to each other. So we've got to be able to communicate quickly uh, and understand what's needed. There can actually be interference in messages, okay? That could be noise, all right? You may be talking to an employee and you're standing on a factory floor. There may be machines running that keep the communication from being effective. There can also be the person who's receiving the message uh, may have a, some type of biased view of the source of the message. Oh, that's coming from the, uh, that's coming from the president of the company. He's not concerned about me, that kind of talk. Uh, perceptions uh, get in the way of understanding messages. And then we have these words that mean different things, okay? Um, multiple meanings in different words, okay? I did find a really cute video on that one too, which was um, sort of an interesting breakdown in language understanding. Um, this fella comes into a hardware store and he's trying to, he's got a list of all these items that he wants and he's trying to tell the clerk what he wants. And he keeps saying, I want a hoe. Okay. And the hardware store, he, got, he brings out a, a hoe to hoe the ground with. He said, no, a hoe. And he said, what? No. And finally he said, no, ho. And he, he didn't pronounce his S's right. He was saying hose. So he brings out this big hose all 
curled up. So he goes, no, hose. And he's like, oh, pantyhose. So he brings out pantyhose for the person. So, I mean, multiple meanings for the same word. And sometimes we're just not clear what someone is saying. Okay. Not only do we speak verbally or use written words, we also have a lot of nonverbal language going on. This is where you're sharing information without using words to encode your thoughts. Gestures, vocal tones, facial expressions, okay? They say so much. Sometimes those things, facial expressions especially, say much, much more than what the actual words are saying. Um, you know, we all have, um, sometimes we're not even aware of what kind of things we're portraying when we use some of these non-verbal things. Um, just very, very interesting. Um, I would say that if you could see, if you could interpret my facial expressions, which I think I'm very guilty of letting them show sometimes, uh, very different meanings of what my face is saying versus what my mouth is saying. So um, very, very different things. But you've all heard that a picture is worth a thousand words saying, so that's definitely. little interesting, but I'm not even sure I'm saying that right, Arabian formula, your impact of your message comes 7% from the actual words, 38% from your vocal tones, and 55% from your facial expressions. Okay, so that's telling me, as a manager, I would need to be very aware aware of what my facial expressions are because that may be coming across with a totally different message than what I intend. So you as an effective manager, you want to use the verbal communication along with the nonverbal to make it most effective. All right, now within an organization, you want to make sure your communication is directly related to whatever goal you're trying to, to develop. You want to make sure you're using your uh, structure in your company and uh, the functions that you're trying to perform as um, how your communication is geared to your uh, employees. Um, you want to have that communication connected to the effectiveness of the organization, and it will be. If you've ever had a boss come into you and say, oh, oh, we've got a brand new process we're going to use, that's so very different than a boss coming in and saying, I've got another damn process we've got to learn how to do, right? I mean, that's two different uh, ways of saying the very same information. And you'll probably be much more effective under the first method than you would the second. All right, organizations will, com will communicate downward, upward, and laterally, okay? Um, the downward is communicating based on the organizational charge to people who are below you as far as reporting structure goes. You have more control on them. Upward is your communication to people who are your supervisors, okay? And then laterally is communicating with other departments, people that are on the same <coughs> level as you are. But you can see it does follow that organizational chart. Those are formal communication uh, tools that are used. But let's look at the informal, which seems to have a great deal of influence over uh, companies. That doesn't follow the organization chart. It follows personal relationships. All right, and I'm sure you've heard of, I heard it through the grapevine. Okay, the grapevine just means that um, the message kind of winds around like a grapevine. 
to get back to you, sort of like we saw with that very first illustration there with that classroom that did the following on the bike thing. Uh, the grapevine might be a single strand, it might be gossip, might be a probability grapevine or a cluster grapevine. Um, there's all uh, illustrations here on the next slide of how that a single strand just goes from person A to person B to person C to person D all the way through. That's sort of like what we saw with the, the illustration with the person fell off the uh, bike went from one person to the next, to the next, to the next. Now, gossip goes from one person to a whole lot of different people at one time, okay? Probability starts with one person, goes to a couple of other folks, and then it may or may not hit all the rest. Okay, you see there that uh, A spread something to F and D, but B didn't hear about it. Okay, and then cluster, A went to C, D, and F with some information. C and D kept it there, but F spread it somewhere else. Okay, so uh, about 70% of all organizational communications flow through the grapevine. You cannot ignore the grapevine. Okay, the grapevine is where communication is going to take place whether it be accurate or not okay you as a manager you cannot ignore that all right communication is the nervous system of the organization uh, it tells the organization how to act you want to encourage people to freely communicate uh, but make sure that the leaders are sending messages uh, trusted by the employees and then you need to have your ear to that great mind to hear what's going on listen attentively and here's some guidelines for you there <laughs> i love the first one this is the guidelines for effective listening first thing is to shut up stop talking okay you can't listen if you are talking that's just simple Put the talker at ease and help that person feel free to talk. And then show them that you want to listen. Um, I am sure you have been in situations where you went in someone's office and that person uh, was not interested in what you had to say. Maybe they were reading their email. Okay. Um, so you want to make sure that if you are a good listener, you are looking and acting interested. Uh, you want to empathize with the talker, okay? Put yourself in their place. Be patient, all right? Don't get up and walk towards the door uh, before the person's actually finished. Hold your temper. Uh, be easy on the arguments and the criticism that causes people to clam up. Ask questions. And then again, look at number 10. There's the shut up again, okay? Stop talking. It says it's the first and the last commandment because all other commandments depend on it. You can't, you just can't do a job well uh, while you are talking. You can't listen. Nature gave us two ears but only one tongue. <laughs> Interesting. All right. All right, so uh, be a good listener as well as a good talker. All right, we got one more video that will help us take a look at um, Help us look at some ways that we can gear our communication skills to different types of employees. Okay, because you may find some employees are uh, quite good listeners, others are uh, gossipers. You know, you're going to have people of all different types working for you. So, how should you, as a leader, actually uh, gear your leadership? So, let me. Hi, I'm 
I'm Suzanne Matson. Welcome to this whiteboard session on how to influence different types of people. In order to look at the different types of people we have, I have drawn up a matrix. And we're going to go through four different types of people. We're all a mix of all of them, but let's see if you can spot which one is most restrictive on this side. On your left hand side, you will see that we have someone who is task oriented, detail oriented, and a thinker. And on your right hand side, we have someone who is much more people oriented, big picture, and a feeler. Towards the bottom of the screen, we have someone who is more reserved and slow paced. And at the top, we have the opposite someone who is outgoing and assertive and much more fast paced. That gives us these four basic types. Let's start with the red, with the driver. The driver is detail oriented, but impatient in an organization that typically your CEO types. They like results. And the way to influence them is by getting to the point quickly. They like the detail, but they don't have time for the detail, which is a bit of a life customer. We give them the executive summary and bullets and let them drive the rest. Let them ask into the detail. Tell them that you have it, and you must absolutely also have it with you. Never say you have it without having the detail there. Now moving to the yellow personality type. These are expressive. They're outgoing, fast, but they're people-oriented, they're feelers. They're an organization that typically your salespeople and your marketing people, they like fun. So how to influence them? Well, don't send them long detailed emails because they may never check their email and certainly not read it if it's a long one. What they would appreciate is if you drop by their desk or you give them a quick phone call. And when you speak to them, make it a bit more fun and outgoing. Make them talk, they like to talk. Ask them how they're doing or how they're doing. So make it a little bit more lighthearted before you get down to business. Now let's move down and look at the green personality type. These are amiables. Amiables are more reserved and slow paced. But they're still feelers. These people don't like too much change. They're really all about harmony. They're great listeners, great team players. And in, in an organization, they're typically your HR professionals or caring professionals. The way to influence them is to sit down, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, and ask them how they're feeling, and give them time to consider their responses. They do not appreciate being put on the spot. Remember, harmony is very important to them. Moving to the last personality type, the blue. These are analytical. They're driven by compliance and by doing things right. In an organization that typically your IT professionals or your accountants and analysts. They are driven by detail and they're reserved. So a good way to influence them is actually through the written media, through email. And they do appreciate the detail. So you can imagine now what happens if someone from the sales department calls someone from the technical department and says, can you give me a quick estimate by four o'clock? Now, these people down here don't do quick estimates. They like to do things thoroughly and properly, and that takes time. So such a message is going to frustrate them quite a lot. So my question to you now is, which personality type are you? Are you predominantly red, yellow, green, or blue? <coughs> That's important because you will tend to communicate from your own preference. So what needs to happen if you want to really influence people is that you need to adapt your style to wherever your uh, stakeholder is, or the senior executive, or your team member, wherever that person is that you want to influence. That's what that. Thank you for watching. Please visit us again at projectmanager.com. <laughs>
so or task or So the key is to first figure out what type of person you are, but then you also need to know what type of person you're communicating with because they will receive information differently than probably you are. Two articles talking to each other do just fine. But you get one that's on one side of the spectrum and one that's on the other, like the uh, person saying, can you give me a report by four o'clock this afternoon? And that person usually wants at least, you know, a couple of days to do something. That's when you run into problems. So that's why it's important that you get to know your employees as managers, not only um, to benefit the organization, but to help you communicate more effectively as a leader. Anybody have any um, thoughts about, maybe you can think of uh, any of you working now, is your boss the same type that you are? You notice she didn't say any of them were good or bad. There's no right or wrong. Just that we're different. Anybody have any instances where somebody communicated where you were uh, one type and they were different. Think about your families if you can't think about your business. <coughs> your mom or dad or your children communicate differently. Surely if you won't have any um, children, you'll know that your idea of what needs to be done is not always the same as theirs. They may be more on that social scale and you may be more on the let's get the job done scale okay so you got to take it what you want them to do and turn it into something fun for them that that's just one of the basics of parenting and all that is is learning how to communicate with different styles all it is all right i will see you all Thursday from South Boston, and um, hope you have a good weekend. Yeah.